good afternoon. He used his iPad. I'm going to use my digital twin here. Yeah, old one. My name is Roger Kirs. I'm a, an automa uh, automation manager from Braskem. Uh, I worked for 11 years in the reliability and maintenance area, and then for the last seven years, I'm in the automation department in Braskem. Uh, a little bit about Braskin. Braskin is a, a chemical company uh, focused in producing plastic resins and basic chemicals. Uh, we have plants worldwide. Uh, most of them are located in Brazil. I have a point in here, yeah. Uh, we also have plants in the US, Mexico, and Germany. Uh, and Braskin has uh, grew mainly by acquiring uh, other plants, uh, although we have also an experience by building our own uh, complexes. Uh, in Mexico is the most recent one, a yeah, huge complex, petrochemical complex, a grass, uh, gas cracker and three polyethylene plants. Um, but this uh, uh, situation led to, to have too many different technologies uh, worldwide. So we have, for just giving you an example, uh, in our facilities located in the south, you have five different DCS suppliers, only in one complex. So this is a very complex situation, but I believe this is also a very typical one for other companies. We have to deal with too many different technologies, of course, also with two different cultures uh, and different histories. Uh, and our journey uh, uh, in trying to perform some kind of digital transformation is a fancy name, but I'm going to try to share with you some of our experiences, uh, of course, some of our problems that we have been through, and some of them that we are still trying to overcome, uh, trying to achieve some of the first results. Uh, maybe we have started this journey in 2016, uh, we received the results of a typical uh, benchmark that is performed by Solomon Associates in mainly in refineries and olefins plants. And when we received those results, uh, although we were glad because we received some good results about uh, efficiency, energy consumption, uh, our safety index were fine, but uh, one of those results concerned us about the maintenance costs. We are not uh, in the first or second quartile considering the maintenance costs. And taking a deeper uh, uh, look inside those uh, KPIs, uh, we realized that, that probably that was because our uh, maintenance strategies were mainly uh, related to time-based and corrective maintenance. We used uh, to, uh, only a few percentage of our working hours in predictive maintenance. So the first uh, conclusion getting those results was, oh, we need to reduce our maintenance cost by increasing the predictive maintenance. What was at that time uh, uh, pretty obvious. But, but before going to this slide, uh, our first approach was, well, we are now globally, we have plants worldwide with dif different experience. Why can't, don't we just uh, share our best practice? Uh, we need to, of course, understand what are the, the different strategies that we are uh, putting in place in the different plants and try to replicate those that we consider are, are the best. And secondly, uh, we need to also evaluate the technology that we have already installed in our assets and uh, take a look if we are exploring it properly. Probably we, are, we already have the technology for some solutions, but we are not applying it properly. And then uh, we also thought about maybe we can also uh, uh, prospect, ask, ask for our vendors uh, what uh, exists nowadays, new technology that we can apply in our business. And then uh, it's when the things got a little bit confused because uh, this is our time. Um, we know that we are uh, going through new times. We have so many different and new technologies. We can make a list of, uh, of a lot of them. Uh, some of them we are being discussing uh, during this forum. Uh, 
and of course, uh, all the vendors are doing their job trying to sell all those technologies. But the first conclusion is that uh, the, we need to select properly what do we need. Uh, we should work for solving the problem, not just applying technology by itself. So, of course, some of those technologies probably will be mandatory for our business because our competitors are already using it, exploring and getting money from it. Uh, other may be recommended. We know that we get value uh, from it. Uh, our competitors may, some of them, already be using or testing. Other may be optional because we understand they have a potential, but it's not clear yet. And other technologies, uh, typically, uh, uh, the results doesn't ever overcome the effort to apply it yet, at least yet. Maybe we can take a look at this a little bit later. Uh, so this is just to, we, uh, the first uh, impressions that we get a little bit frightened uh, about uh, uh, trying to identify technologies to apply to solve this, this problem. And uh, another, uh, when we, uh, we started to study a little bit more about those technologies, we also realized that uh, maybe we were thinking too small. Uh, reduce maintenance costs should not be the target. It should be a consequence. Uh, that's the main uh, idea that we had when we uh, started to, to, to learn a little more about the technology that we have now. Uh, it's much more uh, uh, valuable for the business to increase the performance of the plant itself. Of course, for that, we need to increase the performance of the assets, of the equipment, to make it more reliable, to explore the limits uh, of the plants safely. Uh, and this will probably lead us to leverage the results of the business and, as a consequence, also reduce the maintenance cost. But if we, we just take a look at and, and try to reduce the maintenance costs, probably we will achieve some results in the first moment, but probably we will face in the wall in the, in the next moment. Um, Another thought, uh, we realized that the technology alone probably wouldn't save our problems. Uh, we knew, we got to know a lot of new technologies, some of them are already in place, but why aren't we getting this, the, 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 the money back from the technology that we even have already installed? Uh, so uh, here, uh, I would uh, like to emphasize that we need to clarify our scope. What is the problem that you are trying to solve with, with the technology? Don't put the technology before the problem. First, understand your problem. Then you try to find the proper technology that will solve this problem. Uh, otherwise, you start working with the technology. And when you realize you are working more to making just the technology to be available and not properly solving the problem that you have uh, faced at the first moment. So what are the other pieces of this puzzle to solve the, the, the problem? Technology, of course, is just one of these pieces. Uh, we need to take care about the people. I will talk a little bit uh, more uh, about, about this a little bit later. Uh, about the process, the working process, that probably will be changed by the usage of the new technology. You have to define, of course, a strategy to put in place uh, uh, this uh, new way, way of work and the technology that we have already mentioned. So uh, those are the pieces probably you have to be uh, concerned when you define a, uh, a, a strategy for digital transformation. Just sharing with you some examples of this about people. Are, uh, is it clear for the company who will operate or who will be the user of this technology? Uh, I can share with you just one example. Uh, it's up from about uh, 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 10 years ago when we have just started one new plant. It's our uh, green ethylene plant, it's a brand new plant with uh, uh, new technology. Actually, it uh, allows us to produce polyethylene uh, without using any oil. Uh, it comes from the sugarcane. 
And it was, uh, you use it uh, at the time, the brand new technologies, as uh, foundation field buzz instruments connected uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in an asset performance workstation. And uh, we realized it at that moment that uh, besides the technology was pre pretty new, all of our working process remained the same. So this new workstation connected directly, uh, digitally with the instruments were only access, uh, the, the instrumentation technician only used this, this station when he needed to perform the, an instrument replacement to calibrate the, the new instrument. That was not what he was uh, supposed to, to, to do. Uh, he needed to, to evaluate all the alarms, all the information that was getting from the, from the field to, uh, to, to prevent the instrument from failure not just to calibrate the new estimation that has already failed in his replacing. So uh, that's uh, uh, just an example when you just put the technology and you do not consider the people uh, involved and also the new uh, working process. Uh, we need to change the way you do things. Uh, and another thing is uh, I've mentioned before that we have a lot of different technologies uh, in the, even in one plant. Uh, and in order to achieve better results, you would like, we will need to, to converge these this technologies. We have a vibration monitoring system from Bentley Nevada, the system one. We have uh, loop oil analysis. We have uh, uh, digital instruments. Uh, um, we have, um, uh, uh, digital twin being created for heat exchangers. So we have a, a lot of different technologies that will probably only uh, uh, give us uh, these results that we are expecting to, to, to leverage the plant results if we just uh, put them to work together. And this is some kind of the process that we have uh, we wrote uh, to try to uh, to start the one first uh, project. Uh, we decided to put it in place in our plants in Duque de Caxias in Rio de Janeiro. It's one uh, cracker, one polyethylene plant, and one polypropylene plant. Uh, we first started with the developing a uh, maintenance philosophy. We identified which were the critical equipments. And uh, we've been through, of course, evaluating the failure modes for uh, those equipments. We use this, the, those techniques, and for sure, we are going to consider using the, the SIR uh, uh, methodology as well. Uh, here, is, you can understand that it's related to uh, identify a problem. So we know which are the critical equipments, we know which are the failure modes, then I will try to find the technology to address those failure modes. I will, just, I will not just try to find technology by itself. Uh, we also understood that we needed to put uh, some uh, new uh, visualiza visualization platform. So we choose it to use uh, a lab view, I believe it's from National Instruments, uh, just uh, uh, this, uh, wrote some scripts, so some calculation, and designed some screens. So it's just a, a print screen of uh, 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 a pump performance here. Um, so we used a, a, a new platform for visualization of the data. Um, and of course, we started to analyze the, the, the results. Here is just an image. We also understand that it was very important to put people to work together, so we established an, uh, an asset monitoring center. So you see here that we have four professionals here. One is a uh, mechanical rotating equipment specialist. Other is an uh, electric, electrical engineer. The other is the instrumentation. And the uh, fourth is the statical equipment. So there are four disciplines in the same room taking a look at, at different platforms. Of course, they don't do use only this new one that we have developed. We, they still get information from the other platforms. We have not deployed the, the, the existing ones. Um, we have built also some screens to have better visualization of the process. Uh, they take conclusions about the asset performance, and they send information for our ERP to plan the maintenance. 
um, of course, we get data online from some equipment. Some other uh, variables we monitor offline. We get collect data and put in our service to process the information. So this is typically how the way uh, things are going. Um, here, just um, and in the future, uh, we are of course planning to implement some analytics here. Uh, we are not uh, using it at the moment, but we have prospected and we are uh, 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 in, in contact with different suppliers. So those are the specialist platforms that we already use. So we have pro problems, uh, programs for software from Aspentech, Schneider, Precognize, Emerson, uh, PI, ABB. Uh, those are the platforms that we are already using in this uh, uh, maintenance central. And this is the general platforms for you are prospecting to perform some kind of analytics. Of course, Siemens MindSphere, G, G uh, um, Predix, uh, IBM, the Watson, SAP, Leonardo. And uh, last, I would like to, to just uh, uh, emphasize some of our uh, lessons learned uh, in this experience here. Obviously, clearly identify the problem to be issued. This is very important. It might seem obvious, uh, but it's not the, uh, it's, uh, uh, everybody who follows this, 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 this rule. So we need to, to focus uh, uh, on, the, on the problem. Then, of course, define your strategy. Uh, doesn't start doing something before designing your own strategy. Uh, it's important also to keep focus during the technology prospection. If you just consult too many vendors, probably you will get lost on it. There are too many technologies in place. Uh, probably uh, uh, you will get access to something that you don't need, at least at this first moment. Uh, so it's important for you to keep focus. Uh, Keep in mind that your workflow or the working process will be changed and also the responsibilities uh, uh, in place. And the other uh, important point is to consider the, uh, some infrastructure adequacy. In order to, to, to put all those, those different technologies to, to converge and to uh, um, be used together, uh, probably we will need to consider some kind of uh, different infrastructure uh, the networks are not ready. You will have different databases, different platforms, different uh, programming languages. Uh, so that's uh, an effort uh, to, to put in place to, to put all those technologies to, to work together. Um, the Industry 4.0 can be resumed a lot of in, about collaboration. Uh, the, the, the steam machines gave us power. Uh, the electricity gives us the mass production, the processors give us the intelligence, and now we are living moments that uh, have to put too many technologies working together, different people working together. It may be not be easy de depending on the, the, uh, on the, the, the company. Uh, in order to leverage the asset performance management, you have to have the, the, the reliability engineer, the process engineer, the production engineer, we have the same focus and sometimes working uh, together to achieve those results. The, the analysis of only one of them may not be sufficient. Okay, this is it. <laughs>